what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the 31 Days of Horror. I am your host, Moon616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Yes, 31 Days of Horror, Volume 7, Day 13, and we are going to take it back to 1988 with a film that I have actually known about for a long time. And uh, the fine folks over at uh, Culture Shock decided that they needed to put this one out on Blu-ray. And uh, I was like, damn, very, very cool. I've always wanted to see this one. I always remember the artwork for this. And uh, it was something that uh, looked like right up my alley because, you know, of the title of the movie. Uh, and it is called The Video Murders, again, from 1988. Uh, this is uh, directed by Jim McCullo, who actually directed Mountaintop Motel Massacre in 1983, which, you know, isn't a phenomenal film or slasher film, but it's a fun one. It's a fun one. So I didn't really know what I was going to get myself into this one. Um, given what the premise was, uh, I, I'd always heard that it was very, very low budget and stuff. And originally, I actually thought this movie was shot on video, given the title called The Video Murders. But that's actually not the case. This movie was shot on 16 millimeter, And I will say right off the bat, the transfer looks like it was 16 millimeter. It's nice widescreen transfer. Um, but it is, it's got a lot of uh, grain to it, which hence 16 millimeter. But it's a really good print. It really does look really damn good. I'm amazed at what they did with this. But, um... But yeah, the video murders here. Um, so it follows our main character, uh, David David Lee Shepard, who is essentially a serial killer. Um, he's got a lot of mummy issues. He's uh, he's got a lot of aggression issues. He once had a small video store, video business, stuff like that, that kind of went under. And ever since then, he's kind of been losing his mind a little bit. So what he does is he basically lures in. Uh, prostitutes and, and other women into hotel rooms where he videotapes himself strangling them to death. Essentially, he is a serial killer. Um, of course, the police get a beat on him and things like that, and they kind of find out who he is. Uh, one day he goes to strangle a woman, she gets away, and then, you know, the pursuit is on, basically. So that is the premise of the film. Now, my thoughts on the video murders. Um, First up, it's a very low budget film. It's got a very small cast. Uh, what's the lead actor? I'm just gonna actually throw this over here. Um, the guy, Eric Brown, who plays the lead in this film, he plays David Lee Shepard. Uh, he's actually from Waxwork. Um, first up, I at first I wasn't 100% sure on his performance. It, it seems like he's overacting and it almost seems like he's really shaking stuff. But as the story progresses, I understand why he's playing this character the way he is. It's really, this movie is more or less a uh, character, it's like a thriller character study than a full-blown horror film. It's like a lot of these serial killer type films. The way they're projected to the audiences, they almost feel more of like a drama thriller-ish. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, the set of serial killer films that came out in, what, 2004, 2005? They did one on Gacy and Bundy and Dahmer and, and Ed Gein and stuff like that. Those were all kind of low-budget films that were based on, they were kind of like minor, minor biopics of the serial killers and stuff like that. Focus on, you know, characters and stuff like that. This one's kind of like that, you know, he, they really do kind of focus the character, um, they do a full-blown character study. Right away, I instantly thought, like, his character was, must be based on Bundy because, you know, what he's doing to women, he's strangling him and stuff like that. It actually does even say on the back that it's, uh, in the vein of Ted Bundy, which I noticed before I was doing this review, which makes complete sense. It really does have that type of feel to it. Um, so... It's, it's a very low budget film. It looks low budget. There is a lot of different locations and stuff that they shoot in. There is at times where it does have this kind of like odd video, like music video quality to it. There's actually a scene where he's in a bar and there's a band playing on stage and it's so fucking 80s. It's just incredibly 80s. But the music is really cool in the film. Actually, in fact, the soundtrack and the score are fantastic through this whole movie. I think the music really does fit the um, the atmosphere and, and what we're being showcased here in the film. It really does fit very well, which is one thing that was kind of a driving force in the film for myself. And uh, as, you know, as the movie progressed and stuff, the, the character um, made a lot more sense. And, you know, I think that the script could have been a lot more, um, it could have been written a little bit tighter, a little bit better on the character and stuff, but I think what they were trying to accomplish with this type of character was um, achieved for the most part. I think that they, they get a little bit lazy towards the end and they try to explain things a little bit too quick and stuff like that. Against there's a lot of there's a lot of budget constraints within this film because 
there is a ch there's a police chase scene in the film that must last like 25 minutes in the end of this movie and it kind of wraps itself up pretty quick um and it's not even like a crazy like ronin type car chase scene it's fucking like pretty mild pretty minor not a lot of stunts and stuff like that so it gets a little bit tedious to watch and stuff but it's more of a character study. It is, really. I think a lot of people are going to go into this film expecting a lot of blood and gore, serial killer, strangling, stuff like that. But he is strangling them, right? So don't expect him to be, like, cutting throats and decapitating and stuff like that. In fact, the kills in this movie are very minor. Um, in fact, they're almost to the point where you can almost say they're almost off screen. Like, he's doing it, but then it kind of cuts away and things like that. So it's not very exploitive in that aspect of the violence, the on-screen violence and stuff. Which kind of shocked me a little bit, being called The Video Murders and... The artwork's so damn cool, you're just expecting a lot more from this. Um, the character cracks me up, though. He is so damn blunt. Like, he'll bring a woman into his <laughs> into his hotel room, and she'll be like, oh, there's a... He's not even trying to hide the video camera. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to videotape you. He's just like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And he's just being a dick about it and stuff. And, okay, I guess we're going to do some videotaping kind of thing. It's just... It's, like, ridiculous, but... But, I mean, where this thing goes and, like, why he's doing what he's doing and stuff like that is... I think it's very reminiscent of a lot of a lot of people that have these type of um, these type of lives that become serial killers and stuff. They do suffer from a lot of mummy issues and things like that. And I think that's really what the point is of the film is a showcase that this does happen to a lot of like kind of regular people and stuff like that too. Maybe not regular in the sense of being regular, but you know what I mean. Um, there is there is a point where people do break, and I think that's what it's showcasing. It starts out with him breaking, and it goes into a very very dark place and stuff. But um, but overall, you know, the movie isn't bad. It's really not great. It's not bad. Um, again, it doesn't run that long. It runs eighty eight minutes. I think the credits kick in about eighty two. But I will say though, I mean, once that police state chase starts at the end of the film and it goes on for 20 25 minutes or whatever the fuck it is that's when it does seem like it's kind of dragging and stuff there is a little bit of filler throughout the film and stuff i really do wish that they had have put a little bit more kills and i just kind of more focus strictly on him and his mental downfall like his his mentality is just broken from the start but and like he's very he's just down and out i wish they had to kind of focus a little bit more on that instead of the procedural police investigation parts and stuff like that i think again it's budgets they could only really do what they could do probably with the script and stuff so um Again, totally watchable. I think that uh, a lot of people might be a little bit thrown off by by, um, by Brown's performance as a serial killer at first, but I, I got it by the end of the film. So with that said, I'm going to come in at about an 8. An eight. I'm going to come in at about a 6 out of 10 on this one. Again, it's totally watchable. I actually really do like the look of the film. I like the 16mm. And I was amazed it wasn't shot on video. I completely thought I was going into this watching shot on video until it says uh 4k scan on the 60 millimeter i was like oh shit this isn't video so crazy does look really good i will say the transfer is fantastic on this you mean for a 60 millimeter print it has all the grain there it's nice and clear there's no there's no distortion no discoloration within the print it looks really good so um so i think honestly man i think the, probably the best thing about the movie is actually the artwork which is actually the original artwork to it so which is pretty cool but uh, it's definitely worth a watch it's just not gonna blow your mind it really isn't um i'm a big fan of these low budget serial killers there's been lots of them done over the years there was you know there was a low oh, i can't remember the, the intervision released one on dahmer and from the early 90s it's escaping my mind my secret life is to jeffrey dahmer i think that was another really good one but there's a lot of really good ones this one's obviously based on a fictitious uh serial killer but kind of based on bundy and stuff like that but Anyways, The Video Murders from 1988, decent film, um, really good release from, from Culture Shock, who's putting out just nothing but gold, like, for releases. Like, this is, it's a really damn good release, but they're putting out some pretty damn obscure films and stuff like that, so check out Culture Shock from Sister Label from, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome, which, uh, just burning holes in my pockets, man, they're killing me. Expensive, so. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's gonna do it here for day... What am I on? Day 13? Yeah, day 13. So I'll check you guys later. See you tomorrow on day 14. And as usual...